Uh, you know who I bet uh, enjoys a little Johnny Cash? Uh, head coach of the San Diego State Aztecs football squad, Rocky Long. And it is a pleasure to welcome Rocky onto the Corky's Hotline. First time on the Ben and Woods program on the Mighty 1090. Rocky, thanks for uh, getting up with us this morning. How you doing? I'm doing great. How about you guys? Good. Johnny Cash fan? <laughs> I, I've listened to Johnny Cash before, but uh, <laughs> I have I have others that I like better, right. you know. But, Fair right, enough. Right. Fair enough. Just want yeah. to throw it out there. All right, yeah. so. Uh, earlier this week, uh, you had uh, hotel guests across America waking up, and at the nicer hotels, it's pushed under their door. At the less nice ones, they probably have to go down to the Continental Breakfast to get their USA Today. And they open it up, the sports section, and there it is, uh, talking about the San Diego State football program and Rocky Long and what you guys have been able to do over the last seven years. That is, that's like recruiting gold. That's a valuable promotion, Rocky. Well, you know, if if the young young people that we're recruiting ever read a newspaper, that would make a huge difference. But uh, you know, the people reading the USA Today are are a lot of people that are a little bit older than that that like reading newspapers. But I mean, I'm I'm glad they got to read that, and I'm glad it was in the in the USA Today. You know, that's that's expands across the country, and at least a lot of people all over the country got to read about our program. Rocky, I, I, one thing I've always been fascinated with with college football head coaches is the recruiting process. Um, I got to imagine it it continues to get tougher and tougher every year. What's been the biggest challenge for you? Um, you know, the longer you've done this job, how has that changed, and what's been the biggest challenge for you? Well, the, the biggest change is that there are no hidden uh, gems out there anymore. Uh, when I first started in this business, you could – you could work and find some guys that weren't highly recruited that could really, really play or, or highly talented individuals uh, with electronics and the Internet and highlight tapes and travel teams and all those sort of things. Everybody knows everybody out there that can play a little bit to who can play really, really well. And then so you, you don't find any hidden gems anymore. So it's a lot more competitive uh, when you find a guy that – you have a chance to get there's at least three or four other guys out there that they have just as good a chance to get them so it's it's much more competitive now than it used to be was i reading somewhere that, that you were saying that josh allen who is being talked about as potentially the number one overall pick in the draft was kind of that guy and, and that's how he ended up in wyoming he was that rare that hidden quarterback that not too many guys were on well, you know, some people had seen him, but obviously he comes from a town, and I don't know how big the town is, seven or 8,000 people, little tiny high school. Uh, so you always, when you watch those guys, we, we didn't actually watch them, but if you watch those guys, you, you can see the competition's not very good, so that kind of devalues those guys. He did not get recruited by anybody out of high school. Wow. And then he went to a junior college and played one year at a junior college, and at the junior college, Wyoming found him. So it wasn't just us that missed on Josh Allen in high school. A whole bunch of other people did, too. And then we, you know, unless we need somebody, we don't recruit the junior colleges as hard. We want our program to be based on freshmen. So, uh, But Wyoming found him, and now he might be the very first guy picked in the draft, which is pretty amazing. Well, uh, you're obviously going to have a couple of guys taken uh, this week, Rocky, and I know that's that's gold for the program as well. Uh, just what kind of what have you been hearing at all about uh, keeping tabs on Rashad Penny and and how he's doing leading up to the draft and, and Cameron Kelly and some of the other guys who were hoping to hear their their names called this week? Well, I think Rashad's really helped himself. I mean, I, I think his statistics in our minds uh, should have put him up there right from the start. You know, I, I don't know who the best running back is in the country. We're prejudiced. We think Rashad's the best running back in the country. But I think going into the combine, I think he was rated as the eighth or ninth best running back in the country. Now, everybody that I've talked to and has called and asked about him, I think the, some people consider him now the third or fourth best running back in the country, and they're predicting that he's going to go in the second round. Uh, you know, that's great for him. That's great for us. I think he deserves it. I think he'll be a great player in the NFL. All our other guys are, are last-day draft choices uh, or maybe free agents. we got four or five other guys that are going to be in camp, some of them are going to get drafted like in the sixth round or something like that. Um, now that gives them a chance. Now they got to perform at a high level so they can make it in the NFL. Talking to SDSU head football coach Rocky Long right here on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. Rocky, how how busy are you 
uh, before the NFL draft. I mean, is it is it something where when you have a player like Rashad, is your phone ringing several times a day? People asking a lot of questions. It, it rings quite a bit before the combine. Uh, they they want to know as much as they can about a player before they get him to the combine, uh, and then. I guess it gives them a background on what to ask the young man and, and the things that they want to know from the interviews that they have with them. They're going to find out how fast he runs, obviously, when he gets on the track there and they time him. But they, they want to know what kind of kid he is and all that stuff going in so they know what kind of questions to ask him to see if he fits into their organization. They, this time of year, you hardly hear from them. I mean, you don't hear from them at all because now they all have agents uh, so they're going through the agents and friends and all that to find out where they're going to be and all that kind of stuff. But we, we hear a lot about it before the, the combine. Rocky, I, I know you, I'm sure you have to deal with parents during the recruiting process. Once you get the kid to school, how much interaction is there with the parents? And uh, I don't know, we were talking earlier about Nick Saban and uh, dealing with Jalen Hurts' dad, and he's got a quarterback situation. Who's going to play? And his, his dad gave an interview and said, hey, if, if my kid transfers, he'll be the greatest free agent in college football history. <laughs> I said, I, Rocky would probably take him, sit out a year. He could replace Christian Chapman in a year. But do you have to deal with parents like that who want to see more playing time from their kids, and they want to call you and say, why is my guy not playing a, a, a more time out on the field? Uh, I think every coach handles that uh, the best way they can that fits their personality. I, I think parents are a lot more involved with their young people uh, in the high school ranks a lot more than they used to be involved. Uh, they they seem to have a voice now. The media listens to what parents say in the recruiting process and that kind of thing. It's all it's all what you're comfortable with as a coach on how much you're involved with the parents. There's several guys on our staff that – are in continuous contact with the parents, letting everybody know what's going on and everything. I, I kind of separate my, once we get the young man here, I kind of separate myself from the parents because now it's between him and uh, the young man and me. I mean, uh, we want to develop him into young men. They ought, to, they ought to fight their own battles and let their parents sit at home. <laughs> Yeah, you defer. That's smart. Let the that let's let the assistant coaches take those phone calls <laughs> when they come in, Rocky. So, what's your schedule like? I know you guys did a big fan event last week. Um, you know, the recruiting's pretty much locked in for this coming season. So, uh, you're looking ahead. I mean, August is when you kind of get started. What what are you going to do for the next couple of months? Start advance recruiting for next year? Yeah, that you you hit it right on. And it's now this this time, and I don't know who decided on this rule, but it's a good rule for head coaches. Um, this uh, right now is called evaluation period. Uh, our play, our coaches are out from the middle of April till the end of May, on and off. They're visiting high schools. They're visiting with high school coaches. They're they're trying to get uh, transcripts and that sort of thing, so we can have a recruiting list for next year. And we want to start as soon as we can. So that that's really important. So the coaches are out working, and they made a rule that head coaches cannot be out this time of year. So I sit around and wonder what they're doing, and I watch a, I watch a lot of film, and I go home uh, by five o'clock every night, which is unusual, and I you know I get to come into work uh, by seven thirty, which is a little later than normal, and so for a head coach, this is a great time of year. All right, so I have to ask Rocky from that USA Today article. Did you really tell USA Today that you have to convince the local media that that your Aztecs have made it now? with uh you know all the bowl games you've gotten to and three straight double digit win seasons are we that tough on you rocky that you you got to convince everyone that the aztecs uh, program successful <laughs> well I, I i think that uh I, I think there's some convincing to do that our program is to the point uh where we're considered a really good football team throughout the country uh sometimes when you're at home and it's right in front of you you don't realize the success that they've had because, and I, and I tried to explain in that article, and I know some people uh, don't like when you actually tell them the truth, uh, but the truth of the matter is we're doing almost, if we win the conference championship year after year after year, we're doing almost as good as we can do because the way college football is set up right now is there's no way they're going to let a non-Power 5 school into the playoffs. And, and so you develop your program around what you can do and get the very best success that you can have. And the best success we can have is 
is to win the conference championship and go to a January 1st bowl, which we haven't yet, and that's still our plan to try to get to a January 1st bowl. If it ever was more evident, last year UCF won every single game. They played Auburn, who had beat the two guys in the national championship game. Auburn had beat Georgia and Alabama. They beat Auburn in in their bowl game, and they were still ranked fourth or fifth in the country. Uh, so you develop your program at our level, at the non-power five level, you develop your program to do the very best you can in your situation. And, you know, sooner or later they're going to let us in the playoffs. They're going to take every league champ to the playoffs, and it's going to be like basketball and basketball. Everybody has an honest chance to win the national championship. As soon as they do that, we're going to change our attitude completely. I, I That's my least favorite thing about college football is that you've got – at least, I don't know, 50, 60 teams that before you kick off the first game, you've basically been eliminated. And that's not fair. No, it's that not. Is, it's not fair in any sport to tell a team that by, by where they start the season that you've got no chance. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and, and I argue all the time that, and, you know, there's pros and cons, obviously, but I argue all the time that I don't know why we can't have a 16-team tournament uh, like high schools do. I mean, there's a lot of high school teams that play 15 and 16 games to win state championships. I don't know why we can't have one where every conference champ gets in, and then they still have five spots that they can take the next highest-rated or power-rated teams into the into the tournament. And uh, non-power five guys won't win it very often, but they're going to have a chance to win it every once in a while, just like the basketball tournament. Uh, but I think there's a lot of things involved I don't understand about money and who wants to control all the money and that kind of stuff. Well, Rocky, I'll say this. Uh, From my media perspective, uh, the San Diego State football program is in fantastic shape. Uh, You've done a terrific job. I still would like to see you beat Stanford in the opener and have a chance to run the table next year. So uh, if you can get that done, uh, that's even better. But I'm not going to hammer you if it doesn't happen and you're not in a January 1st bowl game. Get that Mountain West title, and and I'll be happy with that too. Well, you know, and I think uh, it was nice at the end of the article, it did say, I said in there, we will play whoever they put on the schedule, and, and we expect and try to beat everybody we put on that schedule. All right. Well, Rocky, uh, we will uh, eagerly anticipate the start of a new season, and we appreciate you joining us this morning on Ben and Woods. Always fun talking to you, sir. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Rocky Long, head football coach at San Diego State. Newly extended Rocky Long.